Thank you all for coming this morning and welcome to Old North St. Louis. This is an exciting time in the neighborhood. The neighborhood is just getting started with the massive redevelopment and revitalization process. And if you looked up and down the streets, you see a lot of traffic, a lot of people coming to the community. You see a lot of construction underway. And we are thrilled to be part of this. We are thrilled to have been part of it from the beginning. And we're thrilled that the community is going to continue to be part of the process as it continues the revitalization. I am here to introduce my board president. First, I should tell you, I'm Sean Thomas, the executive director of the Old North St. Louis Restoration Group. And I have the pleasure of working for an organization that's guided by a board of directors from this neighborhood, representing the community's interests. And this board is led by a board president who lives just a few blocks away, who brings great skill, vision, and capacity to the organization and the community. So I'm here to introduce John Burse, my board president. Thank you, Sean, and again, welcome everyone to Old North St. Louis. You know, I provided some notes to myself, and I promise I won't try to read them. Um, we really pride ourselves as, as an organization. Uh, we really pride ourselves in terms of being big picture thinkers, and the work that we do as an organization uh, is work that really tries to look beyond just the scope and the boundaries of the neighborhood. We're very excited about the development opportunities in the near north side. You can see that excitement in this neighborhood as you look around and see scaffolding and construction dumpsters and workmen coming in, in and out of the neighborhood. We think the work that we have uh, been pursuing over the last several years uh, will have an impact. And when you think about the broad societal issues that we face today in terms of climate and resources and social inequity, we think there are lessons to be learned from the work that we've been doing in Old North St. Louis. We're also very excited whenever government can tailor incentives, uh, incentives that can leverage socially, ecologically, and economically sustainable development. Uh, this incentive package, we think, has some potential uh, that was recently passed by the state, and uh, we look forward uh, in terms of how that might be utilized in leveraging further development in the near north side. As you look around, this neighborhood and I encourage all of you to take a trip around the neighborhood you're gonna see the emergence of something pretty special here and we hope that the lessons that it provides will provide some instruction for future development across the near north side those lessons include the importance of a broad network a, a, a broad orchestra of many players working together to achieve a common goal working together in an atmosphere of mutual respect and trust. It also plays strongly on the idea of social sustainability. The work that we've been doing as an organization has been building a range of housing types that are attractive to people of all ages and all incomes. We also believe in ecological sustainability. We believe in building densities that support transit, that can attract the goods and services that increase our quality of life. And perhaps most importantly, we believe in partnerships and relationships. We can't do this all alone. Um, it's true that when you think about, we stand on the shoulders of those who came before us. We drink water from the wells that others have dug. When you consider that, you realize that you have to engage the talent, the strengths, and the perspectives of those around you. And in any journey, when you do that, you set a course for success. And the development efforts in this neighborhood to date, which total nearly $50 million, not $1 has been spent on residential relocation. The importance of that has been that we believe these existing residents are people that stayed. They're people that kept the lights on. And as a consequence, we tailored our development work to keep those people in place. Um, the work that you see around you is eight years in the making. And we're very excited about that work. We're grateful for the partnerships that we've created with elected officials. I don't need these notes. <laughs> uh, elected officials, um, our alderwoman, April Ford Griffin, our representative, Rodney Hubbard, our state senator, Maida Coleman, and Mayor St. Louis, uh, our Mayor of St. Louis, Francis Slay. Without these relationships, the momentum that you see in this neighborhood uh, wouldn't be present today. Also very important is the fact that the near north side is not just one neighborhood but many communities. 
uh, it, it's been a, a kind of constant frustration to read in the Post-Dispatch how this tax incentive is uh, going to bring millions of dollars in Old North St. Louis. Is really going to bring millions of dollars into a collection of neighborhoods that comprise the near north side. It's with great pleasure that I introduce uh, a representative, a neighborhood leader from one of these near north side neighborhoods, Rodney Hubbard Sr., who joins us this morning from Carr Square. Thank you again, everyone, and uh, Rodney, the uh, microphone's yours. Thank you. First of all, I want to say that I stand here and representing the Car Square Tenant Management Corporation. Uh, my chairman, Ms. Uh, Parthenia White, cannot be here today, but we do have some of our community leaders, Mr. Gary Parker, who's a product of Car Square and is also the chairman of the St. Louis Housing Authority, Mr. Todd Iron Eels, who also is a product of Car Square and who is an entrepreneur, and also Ms. Cantina, who her father was one of the first uh, 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 people that came out of Car Square to uh, start the Wilson tax cabin taxi services. Uh, I want to first talk about Car Square Tenant Management Corporation and Car Square Neighborhood. Uh, so all of you all would know Car Square was uh, formed in 1972. We have been in a corporation for 35 years. Uh, it came from the village that was built in 1942, which is 65 years ago. And we have been participating in development and co-development of this particular area for over 25 years. In that process of doing development, we worked on numerous projects. Uh, we've uh, developed a property in excess of $70 million. We currently hold uh, site control of about 28 acres of land. So we are on the forefront of trying to collaborate with the new tools that has been brought to the table so we can expand and be involved in the development that's going throughout North St. Louis. Uh, as I have always envisioned that the politicians are not the ones that is the gatekeeper for our neighborhood. I strongly believe that they are the vessel that need to be used to lock and unlock what we want to come within our community for the stakeholders and the people. So I stand here today, and I stand here yesterday, and I'll stand here tomorrow and for the future for to make sure that the communities are involved in the process of developing what goes on throughout North St. Louis. That is so important because with the drying up of subsidy, we need to partner with any developer that comes in North St. Louis to keep the economic development and funds coming so we can become self-sustaining and self-sufficient. So in, in, in saying that, I strongly urge and I support any type of uh, uh, incentives that we can use to develop our particular community. Thank you. Uh, let me bring up State Representative Rodney O. Hubbard to my son. Thank you. I just want to begin by saying that as you can see behind me is a diverse group of people who really care about the revitalization of their community. And I'll be honest with you, a lot of the things that were in the legislation we did not agree upon. But this is a process, this is a piece of legislation that, that's in working. And the first bill that the governor vetoed, it wasn't the best bill. And I'm not saying that this is the best bill, but at the end of the day, we want to make sure that the appropriate Organizations are at the table. I commend Old, Old North St. Louis uh, for being vigilant. I commend Michael Allen uh, for bringing this issue to the forefront. And I commend the Core Square neighborhood for being a stakeholder in our community and standing for African Americans and not just African Americans, but poor folks in the city of St. Louis who do not want to be displaced and who want to be a product of their environment and who really want to see revitalization. There's a lot of work that goes into crafting a piece of legislation. Uh, we have to make sure that we have the appropriate people at the table who want to make sure that the legislation is shaped. Uh, Hubbard Sr. stated that it's not about the politician. He's correct. This neighborhood is made up of neighborhood organizations, and I want to assure the neighborhood organizations who are joined with me today and those who could not afford to be here that myself and Senator Jeff Smith will continue to watch the process. We offered amendments that would ensure uh, local control, no eminent domain can be used uh, in this legislation. We're talking about a tool of uh, $100 million being used to revitalize not only North St. Louis, but it's a tool that all developers are going to be trying to put their hands in the pot. But I will assure all these organizations who are here today that we will watch the process, we will continue to offer 
uh, pieces of legislation that will make sure that the neighborhood organizations have a voice because at the end of the day, we have to come back to our communities. As you know, politicians come and go. Neighborhood organizations are here. I'm a proud product of the Fifth Ward. I'm a proud resident of the Core Square neighborhood where I continue to live and fight for fair and affordable housing for everybody. So with that, I want to bring up a strong colleague of mine who was on the forefront of getting amendments on House Bill 1 that ensured uh, local control would be intact to ensure that tax credits would not be used for delinquent uh, properties and delinquent taxes. So I want to bring up no one other than my good friend and strong colleague, Senator Jeff Smith. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Rodney. Um, thank you all for being here today. Uh, I'm Senator Jeff Smith from the 4th Senatorial District. Uh, I go back, I wouldn't say a long way with this neighborhood when I'm around people who've been working in, in these neighborhoods uh, decades and decades, like, like Rodney Hubbard Sr. But I go back to about 2001 here in Old North St. Louis. Uh, I was one of the co-founders of Confluence Academy, which is about three blocks that way, uh, which was put in an old warehouse, the Wiepmeyer Warehouse. And uh, one of my fellow board members at Confluence accused me of just uh, favoring that site so that I could get a milkshake once a week when I came and visited the school. And, and there may be more than a little truth to that, but I do want to acknowledge that over the last several years since I've worked with this neighborhood association, I have found that the leaders of this group to be extraordinarily capable and diligent and wonderful to work with. And I know that they will move forward in working with whatever developer uh, seeks to take advantage of the land assemblage tax credit. Uh, I trust that they will work in the same spirit with whoever that is. And I think today is, is about the fact that uh, we haven't agreed on everything. Um, we all didn't agree on, on uh, every piece of language in the land assemblage tax credit, but I think today is, is hopefully about uh, letting bygones be bygones and wanting to uh, reach out and, and partner with, uh, with whatever developer chooses to take advantage of this and work cooperatively moving forward. As Representative Hubbard said, uh, we did uh, work very closely with members of the neighborhood organizations, local community leaders, in trying to ensure that there would be uh, real engagement here at the local level. I know that Alderwoman April Ford Griffin had hoped to be here with us today. I spoke with her last night. Uh, she was feeling ill this morning and could not make it. But I know that she, as well as leaders of these neighborhood organizations, is uh, hopeful and optimistic and, and committed to working together to see this project move forward. Um, this is a hundred million dollars, a hundred million dollars which could stimulate as much as a billion dollars worth of economic development uh, in, in neighborhoods that have been doing well but, but could be doing even better. And uh, I know that, that Representative Hubbard and I and other leaders here at the local level are excited about the prospects of, of seeing it move forward. So uh, thank all of you for, for being here today and uh, are there any questions from, from the press? Why should the deal not be struck and we are not signing off on this at all until you write down promises that you're going to tear down the zero and try to clean up some of these lots? What's, what's the difficulty in getting developers to do that? Well, I think uh, that's a valid question you brought up. If you look at a lot of the derelict property that's around the, that's in the city of St. Louis, a lot of it is, is city owned, it's LRA property. So I think a lot of these organizations can do a better job of uh, keeping their properties clean and uh, abating it and finding the necessary, and finding the necessary, uh, okay, uh, and, and finding the, the, the necessary tools. Uh, I remember last session I introduced uh, a bill that dealt with finding uh, slum landlords and it was an outrage and people were saying that we were out here trying to raise property taxes. So I think we need to offer some more legislation and, and go after those uh, landowners who do not want to upkeep their property and who want to, you know, have derelict property that, that's bringing down other, other property values and, uh, and that's, that's causing the distress in our community. I think we need to start with the city also. Do you think the city's doing a good job of uh, supervising the but I don't want to knock the city. I think the city can do a better job in what they're doing. And I know the city is strapped uh, for cash. But if you look at all the most of the land that, that's held in the city of St. Louis in the distressed areas, there is it's owned by the city of St. Louis. Why do you think that we have this kind of problem? 
I mean, you, you have right. I mean, a lot of people have left the city of St. Louis. You're talking about a major drop in population. This city was once, I mean, a, a glorious city that's now on the track to be a, a, a great city once again. But we've, we've lost a, a large amount of population. And some of the people who, who own these distressed properties don't even live in the state of Missouri. So the, the city required, end, up, end up requiring the properties. And uh, I think they're strapped for cash. I don't want to knock the city. But at the same time, we need to start looking in-house also. And, and like you stated, uh, Senator Smith, he put an amendment on the bill that stated you cannot use tax credits for those who are, are delinquent and, and paying their, their property tax, or you cannot use tax credits for those who, who want to pay their fines uh, uh, with these delinquent properties or with these, these abated properties that are not being upkept. We, I mean, we, we have to be a good stewards of our tax credits, and we're trying to be about that. Yeah, uh, derelict buildings make it. Sure. I, I, I'd like to just touch on the issue of the derelict, derelict buildings, buildings and, and, uh, all the questions. and the yeah. land, land reutilization authority. Can I ask, uh, can I ask a follow-up question? Sure. Uh, does it make it that much more difficult to get development into near North St. Louis that you have so many derelict buildings and that those buildings have become institutional government property owned by the city of St. Louis? I agree. I agree. Yeah. yeah. How yeah. difficult is it? It's very difficult. I mean, because you, as you know, you have to get elected officials on board from the local level and from 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 the state level in regards to the tax credit. So it becomes difficult. When you talk to developers out here, they will tell you, "Well, I want to develop, but we don't have enough incentives because it's a risk." Then developers would also tell you, "Well, we can't find large enough parcels that that are assembled." So it's a balancing act. You have neighborhood organizations who have been in place, who have been fighting to revitalize their area, but they don't have the proper resources that they need either. So it's a it's a process that we have to continue to work and try to massage to make sure that everybody's involved. I can I would love to just touch on uh, the issue of the derelict buildings and particularly the question that Alvin raised and um, you know. I don't know how many people realize you're standing in the middle of a 50, uh, um, excuse me, $33 million development that in the next 24 months will turn all the derelict buildings in this immediate area, area into a community, a mixed income community of affordable uh, lofts and market rate lofts and apartments and as well commercial space. Uh, these derelict buildings when positioned with the right incentives, such as historic tax credits, such as new market tax credits, uh, become a real asset to a community and can be the backdrop of a sustaining uh, community revitalization. W what does it come down to? It really comes down to leadership and putting together those relationships to make a project like this happen. Um, so, you know, the answer can be very quickly, well, we need to tear those buildings down, but very often those buildings can be part of a success story that requires uh, uh, real leadership. Um, in terms of the city's land reutilization authority, they don't market buildings. They're basically a warehousing entity. And uh, our organization has been very fortunate to pursue a dialogue with them in which uh, we've been able to create a partnership in which we actually market their buildings in Old North St. Louis. And that has turned uh, a lot of their buildings into home, home ownership opportunities for folks willing to take that rehab plunge. Um, we were uh, surprised that that never existed before and uh, that no other organization in the city had, had uh, done that kind of outreach. And uh, we think there are opportunities, as Representative Hubbard said, for improvement, and this would be one of them. Thank you. Any more questions? advocating the policy of not doing uniform zoning for an area to enact legally a decision, but to wait for a developer to say what they want and then use zoning as a leverage tool to extract things out of them. Uh, do you care to respond to that, that type of development pattern? Well, you know, as I said, uh, Alderwoman Griffin hoped to be here today, and I think she could probably address this better than, than, uh, than Rodney or I could, but, you know, we are today. I think what what is notable about what what we were able to accomplish through uh, through working with with neighborhood leaders here is to ensure local control of these decisions. 
we viewed uh, the action, the recent action at the state level, as giving a tool, giving a tool to communities, to neighborhoods, to local leaders, to try to have um, one more, you know, one more uh, thing in their arsenal to facilitate and, and stimulate development. Um, up in Jefferson City, uh, and this is probably a good thing, we're not responsible for neighborhood development. The local leaders who are closest to the ground are ultimately going to make these decisions, and so uh, you know, I, I trust that they'll make the right decisions. So my follow-up would be then, basically five years ago, locally, a plan was developed and the decision was made to not go to the further step as the plan recommended to make that in terms of a zoning plan um, that was chose to be ignored. So in my view, you gave local control to someone who's using zoning uh, as, as a tool to extract uh, things out of developers. Is that how we want to be doing development in the city of St. Louis? Well, I think the senator stated that we've done our job on, on the state level. And I can't speak for uh, Alderwoman Griffin. I know she was supposed to be here, but she got ill. But I would just say that whatever development takes place throughout the Fifth Ward or any ward in the city of St. Louis, that I want to make sure that there's input from the neighborhood organization because I think that's important. Uh, I think, was it five years ago, you all had a meeting. It was different clusters, different organizations came together to talk about a, a redevelopment plan, and I don't, I don't know what, what, what became of it. Can you just take me through a step-by-step -step process, okay? This building here, all right, let's say I, I buy that and the one next to it, okay? And I've got plans to do something with it. I don't do anything with it. It just, it just sits there like that. Okay, what, what happens to me? Who takes the first step and says, look, you got to do something with it, you got to clean it up, you got to tear it down? It's all the person. That's all the person. That's all the person. I don't do anything. What is the all the person that do? So that's where I it guess is. you get the city inspectors to. So that's why it's so hard to tear down a building in the city of St. Louis. Well, I, I'll be honest with you. I, I don't. I have limited knowledge of, of the roles and the functions of an alder. Okay. But because, I know you can't do anything in the world without having the support of an alder. Person. Okay. Because in other, I mean, and I know you can't compare St. Louis to other municipalities. Uh -huh. but in other places, if you have an old house, you have an old building, you build it whatever, and it's not lived in, it's derelict. You, you basically get two letters and the third one is they're going to tear it down for you and send you the bill and that's the way business is done if you don't like it that's tough uh, why is it so hard for the city of st louis to do that i i can't answer okay. that question right. maybe just briefly address this and, and suggest that, that you contact alderman uh jeffrey boyd you know he's been an outspoken advocate on this issue and i think has probably spoken to representative hubbard uh, has spoken to me about trying to amend a state law which limits the fine that the city uh, can, you know, can enact on people, on landlords who are, uh, who are not taking care of their property. Okay. He'd like to, I think the limit right now is, is just a couple hundred dollars um, per year, and he'd like to see that raised substantially so that the city can then make their own decision to raise it if they want, which could expedite that process. Okay. I also want to add out that last legislative session offered a bill that would raise the cap on the, the amount of interest you can, you can charge for someone who is delinquent and paying their property taxes. If you, if you take the, the site on Grand Carver, uh, Carver, Carter Carburetor, mm -hmm. that's a landlord who doesn't live in the city of St. Louis. He's not paying his, that individual is not paying their taxes on time. It's costing the city millions and millions of dollars. And we were trying to raise that from that cap from prime to about 18 cent to get us 18 percent to get us on equal footing with the rest of the municipalities throughout the state. Uh, that piece of legislation went down uh, in flames because some stated, "Let's leave it the way it is." So we were trying to encourage delinquent property owners and, and slum landlords to do a better job in paying their taxes on time because when you don't pay your taxes on time, the city loses out. Less cops on the street, less money goes into public education. The fight continues. Thank you. Any more questions? I guess we can all go get a milkshake now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all.